In December 1974, three girls go missing whilst Christmas shopping and they've not been seen since. My name's Emma, I do true crime and I'd like to tell you the case of the Fort Worth missing trio. So on December the 23rd, 1974 in Texas, three girls, Mary, Lisa and Julie go Christmas shopping. Mary is 17 at the time. She is married and has been for six months to a man named Tommy. She wears a wedding ring and often goes by her middle name, Rachel. She drives an Oldsmobile 98, which is the car they took to the mall. We have Lisa, who is 14 years old. She often goes by her middle name, Renee. She is five foot two with light brown hair and brown eyes. And then we have the youngest girl, Julie, who is nine years old. She has a scar under her left eye and she was last seen wearing a red shirt and dark jeans. So the two eldest girls who I'm gonna call by the names that they were known as, which are Rachel and Renee, went to go Christmas shopping. The youngest girl, Julie, really wanted to go. And on asking them to come, they said, you need to get permission from your mum. At the time, Julie's parents were going through a divorce. It was a very difficult time for all of them. Julie came running in and saying that she really, really, really wants to go. She doesn't want to stay back. because She's going to have no one to play with. Julie's mother is very hesitant about letting her go. She says, you don't have any money. You're going to have to stay here. Anyway, after some time of Julie insisting that she really needs to go, she lets her. She's very adamant though that Julie has to be home by six, which isn't a problem because the other girls want to be back at four, specifically Renee, the 14 year old. She has a long term boyfriend who's given her a promise ring that morning and has a Christmas party to go to. So she wants to get back with plenty of time to get ready for this party. The eldest, Rachel, who's 17, drives them initially to a surplus store where Renee needs to pick up some items. They then make their way to Seminary South Shopping Centre where several witnesses see the girls shopping. However, when 6pm arrives and they don't return home, their families begin to get worried and they head to the mall. They discover Rachel's car on the upper floor and the girls have obviously made it back to the car because there are several shopping bags in the back seat. The family stayed at the mall nearly all night hoping that the girls would return, but they never did. They contacted the police and initially it was believed that these girls were runaways. Tommy, Rachel's husband, actually receives a letter that is supposedly written by Rachel. It says, I know we're gonna catch it, we had to get away, we're off to Houston, see you in a week. The car's in the upper lot at Sears, love, Rachel. This letter supposedly explains the girl's disappearance and says they've just gone on a trip for a week. However, there are lots of suspicious things about this letter. Firstly, this letter was addressed to Thomas. Now, Rachel never called her husband Thomas. She always called him Tommy. And secondly, it's quite evident that Rachel has been misspelled initially. They get the L and the E mixed up and it's been gone over again. The FBI have looked at this note and yielded inconclusive results as to the legitimacy of it. Now, the parents do not believe the girls were runaways. Um, Julie, the youngest girl's mother, said, what nine-year-old runs away two days before Christmas? Renee, as you remember, really wanted to go to this party. She desperately wanted to get back in time to get ready. All of the parents just said, these girls aren't runaways. It's not what they would do. They strongly believe that these girls were abducted. The family didn't give up and they distributed missing persons flyers throughout the town. They also were quite disappointed with the police investigation. So they hired a private detective in 1975. This man, John Swain, discovered that a 28-year-old man who worked at a local store that Rachel had actually applied for a job there was using the applications of women to make obscene phone calls to them. He was getting their telephone numbers and making very lurid calls. Six female applicants to this store received these obscene, nasty calls. And this man actually did live in the same neighborhood as Rachel's parents. 
He did, however, move away shortly before Rachel got married and nothing ever really became of this suspect. Four years later, in 1979, the private investigator John that the family hired died of a drug overdose. It is believed he took his own life. In his suicide note, he ordered that all the files for all the cases that he ever worked on were destroyed. There have been extensive searches for these girls. Um, police have gone through back roads. They've searched creeks all around Texas. There have been two or three witnesses that say that they saw the girls being forced into a van. One of these witnesses says that he actually approached the man and the man turned around and said, this is a family dispute, leave us alone. The van was described as a yellow pickup truck and was parked near the grocery store in the mall. So the two witnesses that saw the girls being put into a pickup truck, one was a store clerk and the police actually couldn't find her in the end. They couldn't verify her story. The other man, Bill, who said that he saw a man pushing them all into the van and he actually approached and confronted him. He gave this testimony in 1981. So this is like eight years later. So the reliability of this isn't that great. That was the unsolved case of the Fort Worth Missing Three. Despite extensive searches and investigations, their bodies have never been found. They have never been found. Nobody knows what happened to these three girls who went out for a fun day shopping at the mall. My name's Emma. If you like my content, please remember to like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you in the next one.